Exactly. So what concerns Absolutely. come to you arise from humans microchipping themselves? This is the mark of the beast. <laughs> This is, listen, no, no, let me, let me tell you something. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm no biblical scholar here, but it's amazing the parallels made. Well, you've heard of them being implanted in dogs so they don't get lost, but now microchips implanted in humans could change the way we tackle everyday tasks. They could also put our privacy at risk. In a Stockholm business complex, employees gain access not with key cards, but with a wave of a hand. This is something that you can use just like a key badge. At a recent tech conference, Hannes Schoblad explained how a microchip implanted in his hand makes his life easier. It replaces all the keys and cards that used to clutter his pockets. I use this many times a day. For example, to unlock my smartphone, to open the door to my office. Schoblad calls himself a biohacker. We biohackers, we think that the human body is a good start but there is certainly room for improvement. The first step in that improvement is getting a microchip about the size of a grain of rice slipped under the skin. Suddenly, the touch of a hand is enough to tell the office printer this is an authorized user. The microchips are radio frequency identification tags, the same technology widely used in things like key cards. The chips have been implanted in animals for years to help identify lost pets. Now the technology is moving to humans, but each touch leaves a digital footprint, and that can compromise privacy. Even a dedicated biohacker has concerns. It's very easy to hack a chip implant, so my advice is don't put your life secrets on a chip implant. So many economists believe the future will be cash free. You're already seeing it from everywhere you go, whether it's your baseball game or to your local deli. Now, Sweden is getting there even faster than anyone else. And 4,000 Swedes, now get this, have microchips implanted in their hands. We're going cashless. We've been cashless. Where's this cash? Ever buy a house with cash or a car? We've got this. I, I don't even have, I got a couple of bucks. We've been cashless. But that's not the issue. One of these days, these kids, these, I think you call them millennials or something, they're going to take these little tiny RFID, radio frequency identification chips, about the size of a grain of rice. And they're going to be cool, Scotty. Oh, they're going to be waiting in line overnight to get implanted. An office in Sweden is taking wearable technology to the next level by implanting microchips into their staff. Yes, that's right. The newly opened Epicenter office complex in Stockholm is offering workers the chance to be chipped under the skin of their hands. The radio frequency identification chip, which is about the size of a grain of rice, allows users to open doors, swap contact details and use the photocopier. People who work here can be chipped to gain entry to the building and various services. Uh, I've just been chipped myself. Uh, it's not a painless process, but it doesn't last too long, not too difficult. Minor surgical procedure, which basically involves uh, a little chip the size of, I suppose, of a grain of rice being inserted under your skin uh, and you can then go off and have it programmed and then do various things inside the building. And they're going to say, look at this. I can go to the drugstore. I can go to a cab. Isn't this great? How cool am I? Look, I've got this little embedded chip and they'll say they have medical records and you're going to do that to grandma and grandpa in case God forbid they have some kind of dementia and they're walking off. I mean, after all, we have it in our dogs, right? It's like on star for human beings. But here's the catch. One of these days, God forbid, Scotty, you defy, they, they, they find you guilty of something and you go before a court and they say, we're going to sentence you to prison. No, we're going to turn your chip off and you don't exist. Everything. In fact, people are going to notice that when you walk up, they're going to say, who is this? You're not registered. You say, it's me. What do you mean, who is this? No, you're not showing up on this. You don't exist. Tim Shank's dogs have implanted GPS chips in case they get lost. 
Now he has a chip of his own. This is an NFC chip, so it's similar to what, what phones have nowadays. The Minnesota software engineer had his finger cut open to put this tiny chip inside. There is the chip. Which emits low frequencies. He programmed the chip to open his smart lock at home. So that unlocks my door. Men manipulate his smartphone. And it turned off my ringer. Chrissy Heishman from Dallas has one too. And it's just a little glass bead like the size of a grain of rice. She uses hers instead of a key card at work. The online company Dangerous Things sells the device and an injection kit for $57. Dangerous Things warns customers on its site. This device has not been tested or certified by any regulatory agency for implantation or use in the human body. Use of this device is strictly at your own risk. While our officers are facing an increasingly dangerous environment, we are seeing a growing debate about so-called warrior cops, a term that I've heard, and the militarization of police. Now, folks, uh, let's be honest, let's be honest. I grew up in a law enforcement family. Maybe there was a day when if a man was asked for an ass whooping, it's a cop's job to give it to him, yeah? Well, that day is gone. If it ever existed, it's gone today. There is no action you can engage in that will not be on CNN and YouTube tomorrow morning. You don't have to like it. You got to accept it. It's called reality. There's cameras and umpires everywhere. What we want in a, in a, in a modern liberal democracy is we want to turn violence on and off like a faucet. The only way you make a frightened person react in a certain way is to drill it into them, to make it a conditioned response. Men in Kevlar vests and helmets, camouflage, carrying automatic rifles, moving in tactical armored vehicles. These aren't American troops on the battlefield, but police in Ferguson. One observer says he thought he saw police in an MRAP. It's part of what the ACLU, in a recent report, called the excessive militarization of American policing. You may not know what a Bearcat is, but you've probably seen one. Deployed by SWAT and tactical teams responding to violent protests and barricade situations, or to save people trapped in floods and mudslides. Police departments across the country have been stocking up on the armored trucks, taking advantage of a federal program enacted in the 90s, allowing law enforcement access to this type of equipment. A program temporarily suspended by President Obama, reinstated by President Trump. So I think it's bad because I think it encourages police to behave like soldiers. The Cato Institute and ACLU are among the groups opposed to what they call the militarization of law enforcement. You might be thinking such concerns sound hyperbolic, but you would actually be sadly mistaken. Believe it or not, companies have already started microchipping employees. For example, a cafeteria kiosk producer in River Falls, Wisconsin, chipped employees last year. There are governments that run central banks. So they were the first, one of the first ones to call us to say, that we've got to control our employees, and we, we need to have certain access levels and we can't have that compromise, and they saw that as a solution. They need that, they need those controls. George, how difficult is it really to remember banking information? I mean, do you think average people really want these chips? Well, I'm sure not. I mean, beasts are branded and slaves are enchained. Uh, this is, I suppose, the next stage. The wage slave will be microchipped. And the employer, imagine Amazon, just for an example, other brands are available, employing half a million people, every one of them, one day perhaps microchipped. It is uh, grotesque, it is obscene, it is on the face of it ridiculous, except, as you've just pointed out, it's already happening. And even here in Britain, it's happening. It's happening in the United States. It's happening in the tech industries already. And of course, it's all very well saying it's voluntary, but when you're a wage slave, voluntary doesn't mean much. If it's get this job and sign up for the chip or don't get the job, well, people will take the chip. If you think I'm kidding, 
This is Elba. This is, this is like some type of a prison. And people are going to be, one of these days, enslaved by this chip. American citizens should vote in American elections, which is why the time has come for voter ID, like everything else. Voter ID. You know, if you go out and you want to buy groceries, you need a picture on a card. You need ID. You go out and you want to buy anything, you need ID and you need your picture.